welcome to the fourth edition of the Carillon Sports Roundtable. I'm your host, Alex Johnson. As per, I've got my gentleman with me today. Um, I'm just going to stress that if you have any comments or concerns or input at all, uh, go to Carillon underscore sports on Twitter or visit our, our Facebook page and give us everything that you got. The Rams, unfortunately, did not pull out a win this past weekend against Manitoba. So it was a 42-18 loss for this next upcoming game and the rest of the season. What are we going to do to improve this? I, I honestly think the best way is to keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, something worked in the UBC game, and the worst thing that you can do right now, two games into the season, is change everything on the fly. You know, you got to stick with who you have. You got to stick with who you're starting. Uh, obviously, make those little uh, adjustments, little fixes that you have to make. You know, going back and looking at film. But right now, the best thing that you can do for this team, because clearly that they've had some success already, is just stay the course. Uh, their offense wasn't clicking last week, and that was the biggest part of their win against UBC. Hopefully, they can get back on track against the U of A this next week. Uh, U of A is going to be a good test for them to see where they're going to end up at the end of the year, but it's still early on in the season and we still have a few games left coming into the stretch. I think they just got to take the ball and just ram it up the middle. And uh, receivers, try to watch out for those goalposts. <laughs> Don't want to say any names here, but uh, if we could just play that clip. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. However, if we can just not do that. Um, you know, they had a great win against UBC in the first week, and obviously this one was not as uh, great a showing from the Rams. So basically, they need to do whatever they did week one, not in week two. Um, that being said, they don't have a whole lot of time to make those little fixes because the CIS season is unfortunately very short. Um, so they've just got to hit this thing with as many changes as they can make to make it the most well operating football teams they can. Absolutely. Again, any comments, let me know, us know, at Carillon underscore sports. So I'm going to lighten this up completely. Opening forum, what is the best sports movie of all time? Ooh, uh, Kevin Costner takes the cake for sports movies. I mean, Field of Dreams, Tin Cup, Bull Durham, doesn't get better than that. I mean, what more can I say about Kevin Costner? He's the man. Uh, I'm going to go with Slapshot. It's a classic. Uh, I think every hockey fan out there has watched Slapshot, and if they haven't watched Slapshot, they have to, because it's just a cult classic, and they've tried to reenact it, re like make sequels, and nothing will ever be as good as Slapshot. For me, it's got to be Moneyball. It has everything that you need in a movie. Brad Pitt, Chris yeah. Pratt, he's fantastic. And some great baseball. Uh, the only way it would be better if it was about the Red Sox. But the Red oh, Sox have God. money. Kyle. I might just like to warn the viewers at home that these three are trying to get a rise out of me because <laughs> they all know I hate Moneyball. But I'm going to take the higher road. I'm going to say Ready to Rumble. What's wrong with David Arquette and yeah. uh, Scott Kahn? Nothing. And you all can go to hell. The NHL is starting training camps in the next couple weeks. What NHL free agent do you think most deserves a spot on the NHL roster? Got Todd Bertuzzi, Dustin Penner, Martin Brodeur, anyone else? Uh, I'm going to go with Ilya Brzezgalov. He was excellent for Minnesota in the playoffs. Uh, if he's in the right system, we've already seen it with uh, Phoenix. He can be a top goaltender in the league. Uh, and I believe that Brzezgalov should get a shot may not be the perfect team for him right now. He may have to back up, but at the same time, he is a great backup in the league, and he can step in and be solid for any team that he chooses to be with. Uh, for me, this is just a personal fantasy because he was my favorite player when I was growing up. I want to see Marcus Nesta come back. Uh, I am a Bruins fan, but I have a soft spot for the Canucks in my heart because all my family is from Vancouver. He's sweetheart. I know, but uh, Marcus Naslin was my favorite player for so many years. Uh, I just really like to see him come back. I know it's never going to happen, but personal thing. Um, I'm going to go with Todd Bertuzzi, just because uh, 
he instills fear still. He's still a powerhouse, huge guy. Throw him on your fourth line, anyone messes with your with your players, and just ask Steve Moore, he knows what happens. Well, if you damn near kill a guy on the ice, I'm sure you'd have a bit of a reputation. Yeah, scary guy. You know, the day of the goon is over in the NHL. Um, frankly, Bertuzzi and Brodeur are too old. Uh, Dustin Penner is a good forward with some Stanley Cup experience. Uh, but I have to agree with uh, Brady. I think that we're sort of hurting for good goaltenders at the moment. And uh, Ilya has got some great, great, great international experience. Uh, he's played in some medal games uh, for the Olympics as well as for the uh, Russian League, I believe. Um, and I think that, you know, given some seasoning, he could start. Uh, especially if the team was hurting for uh, some guys between the pipes. Uh, you gotta, you gotta watch whatever team picks him up, though, because he's a systems goalie. That's why he was good in Phoenix. That's why he was good in Minnesota. If he goes to another team like Philly, running gun, he's gonna get lit up yeah. like he did in Philly. Yeah. So he's risky. Toronto Blue Jays pitcher Marcus Stroman. He insists he did not throw at Orioles catcher Caleb Joseph in a game earlier this week. However. If we were to bean anyone in the MLB, who would it be? Uh, I'm going to need to go into the annals of MLB history here, and I'm going to say that Pete Rose was a guy that never got as fully beaned with a pitch as he probably could have. So my pick is for, uh, for Pete Rose. Could have or should have? Bit of both. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Jose Bautista. I'm not a fan of him. Uh, his antics on the field are kind of embarrassing if I was a Jays fan. Uh, honestly, he was a really good player a couple of years ago, and now everything has gone to his head. And I believe, you know, if I had that pitch in my hand, it's going to go with, against him. Well, uh, I'm just going to speak for everybody here because God knows everybody would hit A-Rod, and that's who I'm picking. I would throw at A-Rod as hard as I could, right to the nose if possible. <laughs> Nobody likes this guy. Tell me how you're real feeling. <laughs> God honest truth right there. <laughs> well, as for me, I'm going to take uh, a different road and say that the guy that I want to hit is number two, Derek Jeter. Just because we have to remind him that not everybody loves this guy, and it would be a great send-off, right? He's the a last, biracial angel. Last game, <laughs> last game at Fenway. <laughs> Thank you. What would, what would be the best way to send a guy like Jeter off at Fenway? Hit him. Remind him that we love to hate him. Their cheaters, choice. Perfect. As long as we all know who everybody wants to hit in the face with a baseball, I thank you for watching again this week. Again, if you have anything to say, comments, questions, concerns, maybe you just like us, you can uh, send us a message on Twitter at carolon underscore sports or visit the Facebook page. Thank you.